Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today I'm going to answer many long-standing questions about Tarkov's armor system. We'll be going through everything that I can in one video, so feel free to skip the parts that you know already. However, I think there will still be something useful in each section for almost everybody. Before we begin, today's video is sponsored by Outplayed, a fantastic video capture app that lets you easily record your raids, which I'm always saying is an incredibly insightful tool for improving your game, and doubly so with your deaths. Outplayed supports 300 games, but for Tarkov specifically, it records each raid automatically as a separate video file, cutting out the stash organization in between and saving you hard drive space, as well as giving you the option to bookmark sections while in raid as you go with a hotkey, such as after a really big fight, so you don't have to hunt around in the recording for it later on. Afterwards, you can use the inbuilt video editor to cut the video to just the section that you want and share it directly to Discord, Twitter, YouTube, or Reddit from within the app itself to show your friends or the wider world. Do check it out, the link for the app is down in the description and the pinned comment. There are four basic chunks around armor and its functionality, which are penetration chance, armor damage, blunt damage, and damage reduction on penetration, which are all important for the full picture of what's actually going on. When a round impacts on an armor, it will either penetrate or not, as well as dealing armor damage to the armor's current durability. If the round fails to penetrate, blunt damage is taken by the wearer, which is a small fraction of the ammo damage. If it does pen, the armor still absorbs some of the bullet's damage, causing it to hit for a percentage of its base. Up until this point, we've got a good understanding of number one, the penetration chance, as we can see what this number will be using something like Veritas's Battle Buddy app. The pen chance itself is determined through a combination of the bullet's own penetration value versus the armor class, but after the armor is damaged by the first shot, the current durability of the armor effectively lowers the class a bit and progressively increases the chance that a bullet will pen and cause serious damage. The most interesting part about the pen chance calculations is the range for yes a bullet is likely to pen versus no it's very unlikely is actually quite tight. This website lets you visualize it in a nice way but you can see how small the range actually is. A 9 penetration difference can move the chance on shot 1 from 10% up to 90%, it's pretty impactful. Broadly speaking, the rule of thumb is that if the penetration value of a round is 10 times the armor class that gives you a 90% chance to go through on the first hit at full durability. If the pen is 10 times the armor class minus 3, for example 37 pen against class 4, this is the 50-50 point where you are equally likely to penetrate or not on shot 1. Clearly this matters more or less depending on what gun you have which has to be taken into account at the same time. To have a 90% pen chance against class 5 you'd need 50 pen, and to have an even chance of getting through is 47. This is the reason why 7.62 BP is so powerful. M855A1 for the 556 caliber only has 44 pen, but is still considered usable against class 5 due to the fire rate and the recoil of its associated weapons, as it's controllable on full auto which makes hitting multiple times much easier. The final part in the penetration section is the durability of the armor. As the durability decreases, the pen chance increases and roughly an armor acts like the class below at about 40-45% to of its max durability, and two classes below at about 20-25%. to the one point to remember here though is that after being damaged the overall durability remaining is probably quite low. So although the very next shot pen chance is equivalent to the class below, in general it's often worse overall because you're that much closer to zero. A zeroed out armor provides no benefit whatsoever and is effectively as if you aren't wearing anything other than the stat debuff so you may as well take it off unless it's a rig and carrying things for you. In all penetration calculations, the current durability is compared to the original maximum durability, so even if an armor was repaired, say from 0 out of 60 on its first usage where you died and got it back in insurance and is repaired to 53 out of 53, this is the same as 53 out of 60 for the purposes of protection. Damaged armor is less protective even if repaired to what looks like full because it isn't at the original maximum durability. So in order to expand our understanding of the system beyond this, we need to think about armor damage. The penetration calculations all use durability as a percentage of the original maximum to work out what the pen chance should be. This means that all class 4 armors, for example, at full durability have the same chance to absorb a specific bullet. For example, the Highcom Trooper, the 6B3TM rig, and the 6B13 ceramic armor are all class 4, and have the same chance to get penned by, let's say, a round of M856A1 on hit 1, which is 55%. This holds true at the other durabilities as well. At 50%, again all armors of the same class have the same chance to be defeated by a specific round, but because each piece of armor has its own unique durability, the part that changes is how fast it gets down to those percentages. This is where armor damage comes in. Armors like the Trooper have very high durabilities compared to something like the 6B13. While both are class 4, the Trooper has a much greater pool of durability with which to take a beating from, which means that after each shot, the remaining durability as a percentage of the original is far higher. 
This stops the penetration chance on shot 2, 3, 4 etc from increasing as quickly as it does with the armors that don't have as much durability. To compare durabilities between armors of the same class, we have to take the actual number that we see in-game and combine it with the material type of the armor itself. This is because each material has an associated destructibility statistic, which can be found on the Wiki Ballistics page, which is a number that tells us how much armor damage gets applied to the armor's durability when it gets hit. The lower the number, the better. A value of zero here would mean that the armor takes no damage at all from bullets and would never lose any durability, whereas a value of one would mean that the armor takes the regular base armor damage with no modifier. The material destructibility numbers range between 0.25, making Aramid the best on this stat, and 0.8, with glass and ceramic being the worst. Glass refers to visors on helmets. This is a stark difference. Glass and ceramic take over three times more damage to their in-game durability than Aramid, which is firstly why this number is so important, and secondly why the in-game durability on its own is fairly meaningless. We call the resulting number the effective durability of the armor, which is practically the in-game durability divided by this destructibility number, and this provides a fair comparison of the actual ability of armors within an armor class to take damage from incoming fire. This is the number that I focus on in all of my armor guides for good reason. So next we want to know what the armor damage should actually be for the various bullets. Unlike some of the other systems, armor damage is actually pretty straightforward because it is very consistent. Importantly, it doesn't depend on the durability of the armor, so you get the same armor damage number each time for a specific bullet and armor combination. The most prominent stat of interest is the armor damage percentage, visible on the wiki ballistics page again on the rounds themselves. This applies solely to the penetration value of the bullet and has nothing to do with the flesh damage at all. Broadly speaking, more pen equals more armor damage, and of course a higher armor damage percentage also helps as well. There is a modifier for the class of armor as well, so the higher the class that you're shooting against, the lower the armor damage will be. This is quite interesting, because it means that you can't just compare effective durability between the classes, as for example a class 5 armor will take less damage than a class 4 from the same bullet, making class 5 durability more valuable. Another small tweak is that depending on the specific armor and bullet combination, non-penetrating shots can deal more armor damage than penetrating ones. This is not that important in the grand scheme of things, but is worth noting. So let's take a look at a few examples from common rounds to get an idea of what these numbers might look like. This table shows the figures from some testing data. Numbers in red are penetrations, while numbers in black are non-pens. We can see that 45 AP with 38 pen against the class 4 trooper armor deals 7.8 in-game durability damage for a non-pen and 7.4 on a penetration. 545 BT with 40 pen deals 5.7 in-game durability damage on a penetration and 6.3 for a non-pen. Although BT has 2 less pen than 45 AP, the extra armor damage of 48% from AP is actually more impactful than the 35% from BT. We also have M855A1, which is similar to M80, and BP, which is even higher. Now if we move up to the class 5s with the Gazelle, it looks like there's a big step up in damage, which we wouldn't expect based on what we just said, but we have to remember that because we're looking at the in-game durability due to it being test data, this is after the destructibility stat has been applied that we looked at earlier. Ceramic armors take 1.78 times more damage than UHM WPE armors, which is why the Gazelle has a low effective durability compared to the Trooper. To compare these things properly, we have to do what we said before, which is convert the damages into effective durability, and doing this and adding the final set of data for the TTSK class 6 rig, we can now see the progression of armor damage between class 4, 5 and 6 getting lower and lower for each set of bullets. This isn't a hard and fast rule, but roughly speaking, durability is worth about 15-20% to more in each armor class versus the class below it if you are trying to make a comparison across the armor classes. Now, something that you might notice here in the data is the small to medium sized variations in the armor damage dealt. All of the tests were done at point blank, so this isn't range related and is caused by rounds having a small amount of penetration deviation, which can be more or less per bullet, and this influences the armor damage calculation. Some of these rounds are very consistent, like 45 AP, and some are less so, such as M80. Overall, this effect is pretty small, so worth noting that it exists, but not practically anything to worry about. One more element which is usually only important when the rounds and the armor are very mismatched is that the minimum durability damage is 1. This is mostly for shotguns with buckshot and is the only place where the in-game durability is specifically relevant, because between two armors with the same effective durability but a different in-game durability, the one with the lower in-game durability will be damaged more due to the fixed 1 damage being a greater percentage of its in-game total, if, if that makes sense. 
All right, on to section three, blunt damage. This is where the mysteries really start to appear, as all we have to go on is the short piece on the wiki from No Food After Midnight's original blog from a few years ago. This currently says blunt damage is applied if a bullet doesn't pen, which lets through a percentage of the base damage, which is based on the armor's blunt throughput, ammo penetration, armor class, and the current durability percentage. It also says that this is extremely low and not a notable factor in kill speed against anything other than level 2 body armors, but I believe this is outdated now and is actually important in some ways. Since this was written, blunt damage has been increased at least once via the blunt throughput on armors and maybe more that I'm forgetting. What ends up being complicated about blunt damage is, much like the penetration chances themselves, the amount scales up as the armor gets destroyed. Let's look at the next table of test data using the TTSK rig against the same lineup of bullets, including 54RBT this time. The important part about blunt damage is that it can add up and combine with the first penetrating hit, which ends up killing you where it wouldn't if the blunt damage did nearly nothing. Take the 54RBT result for example. With 18 blunt damage applied on the first hit, even though you absorb the round, you only have 67 HP left to take a chest shot, which when face down with a round like this with 78 base damage means you're very likely to die on shot 2. Likewise, a spray of 45 AP deals 27 damage in 3 hits and 42 damage in 4 hits, which if on your thorax leaves you with 58 and 42 HP. Do note that 45 AP has actually been nerfed to 66 damage from 70 when this test was done, but as you can see, the blunt damage effect can lead to a shorter time to kill in a few scenarios. The blunt throughput stat on armors themselves appears to be around 15 to 35% depending on the specific piece, with something like the 6B3TM rig on the high end and the gazelle on the lower end. I don't think it's impactful enough to dictate which armors to choose per se, as class and effective durability remain more important. But if you want to get an idea, there is an old video from Vox E with a link underneath with some of the stats which I'll link to, but this is from a year ago now so it might be a bit out of date. This leaves us with the final part left to go, damage reduction on penetration or damage mitigation as I like to call it. This is when a round penetrates an armour, but the damage of the bullet is reduced and deals less than you would expect to the enemy player. This depends firstly on the round's penetration and the armour class again, also the current durability of the armour, and lastly the base damage of the bullet, as this will be used to determine how much gets applied. Similarly to blunt damage, the more an armour gets destroyed, the more damage that it lets through when it does get penned. As per the wiki again, the amount of damage reduced is between 0 and 40%, and practically speaking, if your bullet is 10 higher than 10 times the armor class, for example M80 with a pen of 41 versus class 3 armor, or BS rounds with 51 pen against class 4, the mitigation is close to 0 and you'll basically do full damage. If the penetration of your round is close to 10 times the armor class, for example AP 6.3 in 9mm with 30 pen versus class 3, or FMJ SX with 40 pen versus class 4, you can expect this to be more like 20 to 30% of damage absorbed instead. At around 10 to 15 points lower than 10 times the armor value, such as L191 for the P90, which has 33 pen against, say, a class 4 armor, this is normally where we get a 40% reduction in damage dealt, although at this stage the actual pen chance is usually really low, so it's quite rare to see this practically. However, as armor starts taking some hits, it starts letting more damage through. The protective qualities of having armor starts to get seriously eroded after about the 50% durability mark. As we can see from this chart here, in the bottom 50% of durability, we have a much greater amount of pass through than from the first section. This simply comes down to what we've discussed previously on penetration, with the armor acting more like one step below at 45% durability and two steps below at 25%, which basically has an impact here as well. This mechanic is the reason that various rounds that look like they will one tap in fact do not. 366 APM versus class 4 armor is a typical example, which won't one tap unless the armor is less than about half of max durability. PS12B for the Ash 12 with 102 damage is the same against class 5. The mitigation is enough to save your thorax from 85 damage unless the armor has around 50% HP or less. Taking one more example, M856A1, which has 54 damage for a total of 108 over 2 shots, is again taken to a 3 shot against class 4, if all the rounds penetrate of course, because the first two will deal around the mid 70s due to the damage reduction and it takes a third hit to kill. This is another reason why 762 BP ends up being so powerful. Because it has 58 damage, it ends up sneaking through and still 2 shots class 5s despite the damage mitigation. Okie dokie, so now that you're either enlightened or totally bamboozled, let's go through a few random things for completeness. Currently there are no hitboxes for armor specifically, the player hitboxes are identical whether you're wearing armor or not. You can shoot right through the sides of face shields for example, so long as the player's face isn't also along the same line of the bullet. This means there is no shooting through gaps in the armor or anything like that as of yet, but it is planned to come to the game at some point. 
Secondly, ranged combat. In all of the stuff that we've talked about so far, we've used the base values for all of the bullets. In regular Tarkov gameplay, this is okay, but if you're shooting over 50 to 100 meters and above, it's worth being aware of how the damage and pen drop off can affect your time to kill. Nothing changes around the actual calculations with penetration and armor damage and all of that stuff, it's just that the starting penetration that you have over range is lower than it would be at point blank. Tarkovballistics.com has a great calculator where you pick a caliber, a round and a range, and it will simulate the damage and the pen out to wherever you specified. As you can hopefully guess now given the rest of the video, using M856A1 as an easy example, going from 37 pen to 33 at 150 meters actually makes a really big difference to the pen chance against class 4. This is impactful if you're going for a headshot for example, as it's now a 1 in 4 chance rather than a 50-50 to penetrate. The final part is ricochet. This is a headwear specific stat that can cause any round to bounce off regardless of penetration, but is very angle dependent. In the testing that I have done previously, at the most extreme glancing blow possible, you can get APSX to bounce around 40% of the time for a pair of class 1 condor glasses, but straight on the chance falls to zero. I'll link my video where I did the testing above in case you want to check it out. You can think of it practically like making the outside edge of your head hitbox slightly fuzzy from a chance perspective, with a probability of avoiding a shot towards the outside but of no impact at the center. So if you made it this far, next go and check out my video on the best class 5 armors to use in patch 13. Otherwise as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.